In this episode of Brian Sailing, we're going to talk about the best way that I found to get the bottom paint, to get the old bottom paint off in preparation for putting new bottom paint on a boat. So, good news is, um, you know, I've heard some 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 rumors that I need some more eye candy to bring in viewers. So we're going to have two strippers uh, on this episode of Brian Sailing. I'm Brian. Join the adventures as I share what I learned restoring a hurricane damaged catamaran with the dream to sail the world. On and off rainy today. Not a good day to do glass work. I figured it's a good time to sand the bottom because I'm going to have to paint that uh, before I put it in the water. I think I'm going to do a copper coat or maybe a homebrew copper coat. We'll have to see. I started with my little sander. It was just too slow. I mean, it, it, it was it just not cutting it fast enough. So I went to the belt sander. <laughs> And that worked okay. Um, so you hit it with the belt sander, get it down to a certain level, and then switch to the other sander. I think with a job this big, uh, you just need a bigger sander. And so uh, Jeff lent me this one. So I'm going to give this one a try, see if I can get this done a little faster. Now that was a cheap Harbor Freight 7-inch sander. And what I ended up doing is I ended up going to Fiberglass Florida and upgrading it with a new pad to an 8-inch and then using their 8-inch discs. And you want to use uh, around 36, 40 grit, something like that, for sanding the bottom off to take it off at a reasonable rate. You just have to be really careful with the sander because it's really easy to get a, a bad angle and, and go in and gouge it and make a big gouge in there, and that's not a good thing to do. So as far as sanding went, sanding with the single action 8-inch was the best thing for me. The worst thing about a catamaran is once you finish, you got to do the whole thing again on the other side. But <laughs> I guess the, the upside of that is usually by the time you finish something is when you actually figure out uh, how to do it right. So then when you move to the other one, you actually kind of know what you're doing. Uh, first I tried sanding and after sanding for I think about a day or a little good half day, I figured it was going to take me about 16 days to sand the bottom of the boat with one person. I guess it's not full days, but it was all, it was going to take a long time and I was super sore. So I, I decided to try stripping and um, I tried these two different paint strippers. This one here worked pretty good. Um, it, it worked instantly. As soon as you put it on, like it, with the paintbrush I'm using to put it on, it starts coming off with the paintbrush and turns it all black. Uh, and so I, I, I like that and I use that for, for a whole day and I'm like, okay, well, um, that's going to work good. Then I also tried this one, but this one, um, this one evaporates off so fast and it doesn't work fast. It's like super slow. So I, okay. But, um, what I saw someone do is they put plastic over it. And so I put plastic over it and, um, peeled the plastic back and it worked really well. So in the end, this was the method that I found worked the best for me. Um, and it turned to be less toxic because you, you, you're not making all of that black dust of the, of the bottom paint. However, any way you look at it, it's still a lot of work and you still have to go back and sand it after in the end. But for taking off the bulk amount of material, this worked pretty good. So what I would do is I would just paint on the, um, the stripper underneath the plastic and then cover it with the plastic and push the plastic up and it would just kind of stick to it. Sometimes I had to tape the plastic. You can see where I've taped it at the top. And I just covered the entire side of the boat like this. Then I would let it sit for about three to five hours is what it would take to kind of absorb in. And I would try little spots to see uh, when it was actually ready. Then when it's ready, you just peel the plastic back and start scraping and it just comes off in big chunks. Now this was way easier than sanding. Now you're still gonna end up having to sand it uh, in the end, but uh, for taking off the bulk of material, this was way faster and not nearly as messy. There's not really any reason to strip the bottom of your boat unless you're tr trying to get rid of lots of layers. And this had really good bottom paint on it and it was really thick. And so it's just taken a lot of work. Normally when I just do a new bottom job, I'll just, uh, just give it a quick sand knock off any bad chunks and then th throw another coat on top but because i'm going to do copper coat on this uh this has to be uh all gone so i have to take it all off down to um to, to bear the copper coat has a pretty cool stripper too that you can just spray on and then pressure wash off that's supposed to work pretty good uh but it was 160 dollars uh, a gallon and this stuff here turns out to be uh like 50 and 30 so <clears throat> yeah, I, I wasn't, didn't want to spend that much on it. Uh, you can also have it sandblasted, but that's usually pretty expensive too. 
So after you strip it, you still have to go back and sand it to get off the stuff that the stripper didn't take off. Uh, but it's a lot easier, and you can tell by the quantity of dust uh, that's flying off of this compared to before. It's not nearly as bad. I also wonder if there was some sort of black uh, barrier coat underneath the black bottom paint, because that bottom layer is really hard to get off. Either way, I'm going to take it down and put a new barrier coat on it before I refinish the bottom with new bottom paint. Well, right now I'm in Maryland, um, and the, the bottom work that I'm showing you now was done... Uh, right around Thanksgiving, end of November. And really it's taken me two months, pretty much the whole month of December and the month of January to get moved up here. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. And part of that was um, I got moved up here the first load in uh, December, but then I had to go back down and get the, the garage. Well, you guys saw my garage. I had to get my garage cleaned out. And so we've already hauled one 26 foot U-Haul truck all the way up here. And I've still got another one probably to haul up. I've got stuff in storage with all my boat stuff. Uh, so anyways, it's been crazy. Um, that's what's taken me uh, January or December and January. Uh, by the time you get this, I'll be back down in Florida uh, working on the boat. I have got some questions about why would I move to Maryland? It's cold, uh, politics, blah, blah, blah. Well, the short of it is, it is part of my cruising plan. Um, it's actually a downsize in house for me. This house was quite a bit less expensive than my one in Florida, and it gives me a nice spot to keep the boat uh, as sort of a home base, because when I go cruising, I don't plan to sell the house, so we'll be able to keep this house, and I'll be able to take off and go cruising, and then always come back up here, and it will be safe from hurricanes. And if it gets too cold for me, I got the boat. I'll just go south. I hope you like this episode. Uh, thanks for watching. One of the things that someone put a comment in that they didn't like the, the family drama, they just wanted me to see the fix the boat. Well, you know, this channel is more than just a DIY how to fix a boat. Now there is that in it, but this is a DIY fix adventure channel. So, until next time, there'll be lots of fun, uh, and we're do we got all sorts of crazy stuff planned. So, stay tuned, and uh, we'll show you how to rebuild an engine. Uh, that's going to be coming up soon as I go back to Florida. That's one of the first things I'll be doing. I'm also building a DIY lithium battery bank for the boat. So, uh, lots of fun stuff like that. So, stay tuned, and until next time, live your dreams.